matching hand clone today? No. No. We're the same color. Same color, not the same hand. I, I wasn't walking past, coming out fast enough for these two, or yeah. three. <clears throat> we walk around waiting. Let's see your show dog walk. <laughs> look at how, look at how Piper just struts her stuff. Let's everybody know. Oh, look at Denise going all the way to the end of the runway too. You're blocking the dog's view. <laughs> it's like you think you're right, more important. So she didn't want to admit it. Okay, it's, uh, look at it, it's sunny out. Look at the clouds. You see the sun? See the sun? Supposedly that's what they said. Denise 70, told me. 76 and sunny. And she says, 76 sunny and balmy. Yeah, and it wasn't balmy. Well, to the end you get a little sweaty, but. Actually, it was pretty nice. Yeah, okay, I actually okay. was sound asleep when she called me. Mm -hmm. I usually wake up about five minutes beforehand. And I woke up about 6.30, so. <laughs> uh, anyway. anyway, on with our day. Denise has got stuff to do. Not that you'll see. No. Oh, you're not on this channel. Yeah. You wouldn't see it anyway. Oh, and okay. we got a bunch of questions for tomorrow. Okay. If you got any more questions for her. Are you going to tell me any of these ahead of time? No, I like to spring them on you. Yeah, you get to know them, but not me. I'll let mm. her see them because she complains like that. Uh -huh. She's like, she's what we call her. She just wants to make it look like she's so smart, and I'm not. There's a bug. All right, see you later. Well, good morning. Today is Tuesday, August 25th. And it's not morning. <laughs> it's about 6 o'clock at night. I, um... I'm in my happy place. I'm outside. In Michigan, this isn't going to last too much longer. I probably got another, if I'm pushing it, maybe five more weeks of being outside. And then it's going to be back into the house. And then you'll all be able to hear me all the time because I get a lot of complaints that uh, you can't hear me outside. And then I get people saying that they can hear me just fine. A lot of times I think it's the device, but then I've heard from other people that I know that have always heard me in the past and then they didn't hear me yesterday. So I'm going to try to talk louder and all my neighbors are going to hear me and they're going to go, who is she talking to? <laughs> but anyway, we have some birthdays today. Today is my son's um, mother-in-law, Kathy. It's her birthday today, but she doesn't watch my channel, so I'm not even going to sing to her. I did send her a text. Uh, I did wish her a happy birthday. I said happy birthday to her on Facebook. So, um, you know, you don't watch my channel. That's the punishment. That's the, that's the price you got to pay. But I know that Lori Hensley watches me. So, Lori, you know you're going to get a song. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lori. Happy birthday to you. Cha-cha-cha. And it's also Gail H's birthday. So, Gail, you get a song, too. It's your birthday too. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear gay y'all. Happy birthday to you. Cha cha cha. And also, it's Rosie Helmanek. 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 H e l m i n i a k. Helmanek. Helmanek. Did I say that right, Rosie? I know I said the Rosie right. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Rosie. Happy birthday to you. Cha-cha-cha. Okay, so what have I done all day? Hmm. Well, I answered my comments, and I agree with all of you that uh, I need to get a new doctor because uh, you've all convinced me that he's not flaky. He's just lazy or dare I say incompetent <laughs> I don't know it's just I, I thought you know I was really trying to give him the benefit of the doubt but this is my life and you know my health is you know he's gonna see me for that what 15 or 20 minutes every six months my life's not gonna affect him one way or another you know I always say that about your job you know like when people think that they're so irreplaceable you know I always told people that, you know if you were to fall down dead in your job they'd step over the body and hire somebody else <laughs> because they just move on there's nothing to see here just keep on moving and that's just true I mean you can break your neck for I mean I'm not saying that you shouldn't give it your hundred percent because I always I got a little itch on my nose I'm gonna kiss a fool um, 
I've never said that you don't give 100%. You always give 100%, no matter what you're going to try to do in life, whether it's your job or a relationship or anything, your diet, anything, you want to give it 100% because then you know that you've really, really done your best. You've really tried your best. But I always found that sometimes in the past when I was working so hard, I got burnt. I really did get burnt. I really, um, the, uh, the reason I retired so early is um, I was working for a company. I started off in the mail room and uh, the company was kind of dissolving and they put everybody into the same position. So everybody had the same job responsibilities. Everybody had the same amount of hours that they worked. I mean, they came in at different hours. You could come in, we had a staggered shift that you could come in, you could pick your hours. I chose to come in at six so I could leave at three. Um, but you could come in, like, you could even come in at nine if you wanted to work till six. I mean, so, I mean, it, that was, I had no problem with that. What I had a problem with is the people that came over from, like, the uh, accounting department, were making probably, when they came over, when we first formed the new company, were probably making at least three or four dollars more an hour than me, which obviously they have more experience. They were doing accounting. I was just doing the mail room. I understood that completely, but I really thought that it within time that I would work my way up to getting the same amount of pay because we were doing the same amount of work. We were doing the exact same. Our job descriptions were exactly alike. There was nothing that was varied. Our job descriptions were the same. And I um, I wrote so many letters because originally when we were taken over, we were taken over by a company that was in uh, England. And I wrote so many emails to them. And then I also wrote emails. Then we were taken over and it went to some of our jobs. Well, originally our jobs had gone to India. And then from India it went over to England. And then from England it came back to the United States. All through that, all through these changes and stuff, I kept pleading my case. And the thing that really irked me the most is when we would get our raises, we would get like a straight percentage. So like if everybody, if you got a 3% raise, everybody got a 3% raise. So if I'm making $10 an hour, I'm going to get 30 cents. But if somebody's making $15 an hour, they're getting 45 cents. So why are they getting a better raise than me? And that was my main bone of contention. I was always so upset about this. And so um, I had gone to my manager and I had asked him about um, just at least bringing me up to what everybody was getting. And at the time we were hiring temporary people and I kept saying that the amount of, and we didn't need the temporary people. The temporary people were friends of his that were just getting a job because there was not eight hours worth of work. We would get our work done in like four hours, but we'd have to sit around for four hours. We could do whatever we wanted for those four hours. So, I mean, in that sense, it was a cushy job because you could watch TV, you could bring a movie and watch it on your laptop, you could read a book, but you had to be there. You couldn't go home. You had to stay there, but you got paid for being there. But my thought was, why are you paying somebody else to come and just sit around, one of your friends, and basically take my money that I could have gotten in a raise that you spent on them because I have been a manager in the past and I know how the, the scale works as far as your uh, budgets and things like that and your payroll so I wrote so many letters I just wrote so many letters and he was I was getting nowhere with him I really was getting nowhere with him and and I kept thinking you know I'm devoting my life to this company and I'm doing so much I was doing more than a hundred percent I really do feel that way maybe I'm just like building myself up but I like to put my whole heart into things when I do things and I was just getting so upset and so finally 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 I was able to reach somebody high enough up that we had a conference call and when we had the conference call and I stated my case and the manager at the other end agreed with um, with me and told my manager I want you to start next week putting her to the same pay as everybody else to the to the next you know like to the highest person not to the highest person he said not not to take money away from people but the next highest up which would have been four dollars more an hour and I was fine with that I would have never reached the people that really were like six and seven dollars ahead of me I understood that but you know I would have taken a four or five dollar raise and so uh, it was all agreed that that was what was going to happen and so then when I got my check 
like three weeks later because we held back a week, I didn't get the raise. And so then I went and I asked him, I go, I was supposed to get my raise. And uh, he says, well, I didn't agree with them. So then I was writing the payroll and that, well, I could never get a hold of the same people. That I, I, It was just a fluke that I got a hold of them in the first place. The, the, company, was, the company went out of business eventually because it was such a shoddy ma management. Uh, somebody else took them over, but I mean, that particular company kind of went out of business. But I was just so disgusted. So that was the day, it was in June of 2012. And I went to, left work, went to the Social Security office because I was 62 at the time and I was going to be 62 in September that was it I was going to be 62 in September and I wasn't going to get a lot of money anyhow because I didn't work most of my life and so I knew that I was not going to I was going to get a piddly social security check no matter what so um, let's just say we're not going to live on mine unless you just like have a hankering for cat food or dog food and I don't even though that might be a luxury we might eat, be eating hamster food on my social security check because it's pitiful but anyway, um, I digress. So I went to um, Social Security office, and she had told me how much money I was going to make in September. And so if I went retired in September, and I says, oh, okay, I think I'll do that. And she says, now here's another option. She says, wait until January 1st. And if you wait till January 1st, you can get an extra, I think it was $45 a month. Okay, now this is something I'm going to get the rest of my life. So I'm thinking... I think I can put up with this for three more months for $45 a month for the rest of my life. So yeah, I can do that. So I said, okay, I think that's what I'm going to do. And so then she says, now, we filled all the paperwork with all of that. And she says, now, here's your other option that you can do. And I go, what? So what you can do is you can work for, I told her how much I made. And she said, you can work for six months and collect a full paycheck. So you can work your, your 40, I was working 45 hours a week, I think it was. Uh, you can work your full 45 hours a week, collect your full pay, and still get your Social Security check each month for six months. But come July, I think what we figured out was the 20th, yeah, July 20th, because that's the day I retired. But come July 20th, that has to be your last check, and uh, you need to keep track of it, because it might be July 1st if you have overtime. And then you won't have to pay any of it back, and you can keep all that money. And so I said, I think that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> so I worked the whole time thinking, well, you know what? I'm getting um, a big raise each week just on my Social Security. I never said anything. I told two of my best friends at work and never told them. Uh, ne told them never to tell anybody that I was going to do that. And then two weeks before I was supposed to, to retire, to uh, stop taking the, so you know, like taking the money and happen to pay Social Security, I went into his office and I gave him my two-week notice. And uh, he says, you're quitting. And I go, yeah. And he says, well, you do the work of two people. And I said, yeah, and I get paid half of what everybody else is getting paid. I said, I I'm glad that you finally acknowledge that I, I do the work of two people. I said, but you never acknowledged me like that with pay. And uh, so he said, well, uh, how about if I give you a raise now? How about if I bring you up $3 an hour? And I says, too late. It's too late. And so he said, well, well, why? Why is it too late? And I said, because... Uh, I'm done. I'm just done. You know, you you were told last year to give me more money, and you didn't do it. And so, therefore, I'm done. And he said, well, can I ask you how long, when you made this decision that you were going to um, retire today? And I said, yeah, I made it on uh, June 18th, 2011, or 2012. He says, you made this decision last year? And I said, yes. And I said, that day doesn't, isn't significant to you, is it? And he said, no, it's not significant to me. Why is it so significant to you? Why do you remember it so well? I said, because that was the first paycheck I got that I was supposed to have my $4 an hour raise on that you didn't give to me and said I was never going to get. And I decided right then and there I was going to leave. He says, well, who knew of this? And I said, well, I'm not going to tell you. I said, but I have friends here that knew. And he says, and they never said anything to me? And I said, I have honorable friends. I have friends that I can tell something to, and they're going to be honest with me, and they're going to keep my secrets. And so, yeah, I'm going to be gone in two weeks. And so he said, oh, okay. So I said, I'll train somebody new for the mailroom, and I'll train you, because I still did the mailroom, plus I did the other work that everybody else is doing. So, so I was actually doing an extra job and still getting paid less money. I was the lowest paid person there. I was the lowest paid person. And I was there 
at least four years longer than the highest paid person. Now, granted, she came from a, a department where you know you, they got paid more money, but I, I still had more seniority than her, and it's still I got less money than her. So I was like kind of pissed, and so but I thought, no, I'm going to give it. So I went in the first day to train, and he had like a little lackey girl that did all of his work. He never did any work. She did all of his work because she was like a she was a kiss ass. I mean, I know it's you know she couldn't put her nose up his butt any farther. I was surprised that she didn't come out his throat. She just like. She did everything for him. And so then I would try to train people, and she would come in, and she would try to um, override what I was training them to do because she had a better way. Now, mind you, I was in the mailroom for 13 years, and it ran really efficiently. Uh, I never got a complaint, not one complaint about my mailroom. And uh, all of a sudden, after 13 years, she knows a better way, and she's never, not day one, worked in the mailroom. So I went to his office, and I said, you know, I still got nine more days to work you need to tell her to back off or she can train the person well he didn't want to lose her because that was she did all of his work so she says, well you know she might have some better ideas you should have somebody with a different perspective okay for the next nine days I started where my job started at six o'clock I rolled in around seven I'll be honest I rolled in around seven I didn't start working till about eight thirty, nine o'clock took my break at 10. Rather than a 15 minute break, I took a half hour break. I thought, you know, I'm leaving in a little while anyhow. I don't really care. I had lost all sense of purpose. I had lost all sense of respect for him and all sense of loyalty. Now, I'm not bragging that I did all of this because it's not something to be proud of and I should be ashamed of it, but I'm not. I really am not because I think that the way I was treated and I really do feel at that time and I think that was proof to me that if I would have died on the job, they would have stepped over my body <laughs> and just continued on like I wasn't even there. But uh, I do miss working. I do miss some of the people that were there. Not all of them, but some of them. But uh, I, I knew that even when I talked to my friends, because like he was the manager and he didn't get to work until 10 o'clock. And he left every day at 11 to go buy lottery tickets he got back around 11:30. He was like a he was. You could keep your watch, set your watch to him. He would get home. He would get back about 11:30. He would go to lunch from 12 to 2, and then he would come back, tell everybody what they had to do, and he would be out the door 2:15. Now, if that's not a cush job, I don't know what is. And the reason he could do that is because this one girl was doing all of his work. So, how did I even get started on this story? And look at it, 16 minutes in. I'm this is gonna be a long video. But, um, oh, it was like just giving it 100%. And, and the doctor wasn't given 100%. I realized that. So I definitely am going to look for another doctor. Uh, I don't think he's taken my best interest in mind. I really don't. I think that he has a very nice office, so obviously he's got enough money. <laughs> he's a young guy. He's like in his 30s. But uh, I, I just don't think he was paying as much attention to me as he should. So when I go to my physical or for my primary doctor next month for my yearly physical. Um, and I have decided I never got a flu shot and I never got that pneumonia shot. I'm going to get that next month. But, uh, you know, the vaccine. But uh, I am going to ask her for another doctor because I'm definitely going to get another doctor. Uh, even when I was in there with him, I thought, well, you know, like, maybe I can take advantage of the fact that he does. He thinks that uh, 160 is too low for me. I asked him to write me a note. He said he wouldn't do it. It was only my primary doctor could write me a note. So I did think of that, too. <laughs> But it didn't work. He didn't. He didn't answer for that. So, anyway, I finished my book last night. Well, I no. I almost finished my book last night. I had uh, ten pages left to go, and I thought, no, I gotta wait. <laughs> so, <laughs> closed up the book, and uh, when I got up this morning, I finished it. It was very good. And so now I'm on to my next book, which is The Inn by James Patterson, and um, obviously. Candace Fox is the one that wrote the book. According to my theory, he did the outline. But it's about this uh, police officer that retires and he buys an inn on the uh, top of a, like a, um, on top of them, like, like real high up in the hills and stuff like that. And it's like kind of secluded. And um, he, he's not like, he could care less what people come and go in his inn as long as they pay their bills. That's all he worries about. And then there's a police officer that lives there too, and he's the same way. As long as they don't bother him, he won't bother them. And uh, then these people move in, and they're like, 
gang people and they got murders and drugs and stuff like that. And a reporter comes and it all starts from there. So I'll let you know how I like it. I really did like my other book, Deep Freeze. That was a really good book. I did like that one by uh, Lisa Jackson. But rambled on. For breakfast I had um, some bacon and eggs. I had a slice of toast and my berries and a grapefruit. And for lunch I had a bowl of my chili and a pretzel rod and an apple. And for dinner I'm just going to have a salad because I'm... I haven't eaten my dinner yet. It's too early. You don't eat dinner before 7. Jeez, oh, Pete. At least I don't. And then, uh, and I know people think that's really late, but when you don't go to bed until 2 o'clock in the morning, 7 o'clock is like a normal time. Because think about it. If you eat dinner at 5, most people that eat dinner at 5 go to bed at 11. So that's 6 hours later. So I think I'm right there. But, like I said in my opening title, I'm believing in myself again. Um, I really do believe that if you, you know, I do love magic. I just always try to figure out something with magic seeing if I can figure out how they did it and uh, so I just um, I, I'm gonna believe in the magic of me and I'm gonna believe that I can make it happen and I am gonna make it happen I am doing better and I know that I can and I know the reason I'm doing it is because you guys tell me like it is and I so appreciate that you're very um, good with your offers and that if, if anybody ever criticizes me I always feel it's constructive I really do because you're not saying it to be mean or nasty. You're just saying it because it's maybe something I'm overlooking. Um, I think that I'm very critical of myself as far as like I would never tell other, other people the things that I tell myself. And you guys point that out to me all the time and I'm so appreciative that you do. I really do. I'm really glad of it because, um, you know, what can go wrong if you believe in yourself? Nothing can go wrong. It can only go right because... And all decisions in life, even though I didn't really want to retire at the time, it was the right decision for me. It really was. And, and even though I didn't really want to lose weight when I joined Weight Watchers in 2016, because I was joining because I wanted my daughter to lose weight, it was the right decision for me at the time. It really was. And uh, I really do think that in life, if you make a decision and it's the right decision, it'll come back and you'll know it. And I've made poor decisions in my life as everybody did, but I've also made really good decisions too. And uh, one of the decisions is believing that I can do this, and I know I will. I definitely know I will. I apologize that it's so long, this video, but uh, you know, you get me in a roll. <laughs> so uh, tomorrow we're, Denise is going to come over and we're going to do a Whatever Wednesday. Yeah, so if you have any questions for me, put them in the comments down below. Uh, thanks again for all your support about my doctor. I'm glad I'm not the only one that thought that he was kind of incompetent and um, stay with me because you know what the best is yet to be it really is stay along with me because the best is yet to come it really is so uh, if you're new to my channel please subscribe leave a comment hit that like button and share it if you think somebody might like to see it and as always stay safe and I will talk to you guys tomorrow morning I really will talk to you in the morning <laughs>